This time on Jonathan Bird's Blue World, an endangered sea turtle rescue operation. Hi, I'm Jonathan Bird, and welcome to my world. It's a cold January day in Massachusetts. The ocean here around Cape Cod is in the low 40s and a strong wind is howling off the water. But the wind is a blessing. Stranded on the sand is a juvenile Kemp's Ridley sea turtle. This little guy is barely clinging to life. He would have drowned in the cold water, except that the strong wind blew him ashore. Sea turtles are marine reptiles that live almost all of their lives in the sea. They must surface to breathe, but they spend most of their time underwater foraging for food. In some places, when the water is cooler, like the Galapagos in Hawaii, sea turtles do occasionally crawl up on the beach to warm up in the sun. But most sea turtles only come ashore to lay their eggs in a nest at night. hatch a few months later and the baby sea turtles race to the sea. Most won't come ashore again for many years as adults when they're ready to lay eggs of their own. There are seven species of sea turtles in the world, like the green sea turtle, the loggerhead, and the hawksbill. All are considered endangered or vulnerable. But none are rarer than the critically endangered Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, which lives in the Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean, and Florida. In the summer, Kemp's Ridley turtles follow the warm water of the Gulf Stream northward into prime feeding grounds as far away as New England and even Newfoundland. As the water cools in the fall, most of them turn and swim south again, hugging the coast, munching on algae, and making their way back to warm water before winter. But some of the turtles enter Massachusetts Bay, trapped by Cape Cod, and can't figure out how to get home. As the water gets cooler, the turtles start to freeze. As reptiles, they cannot keep their bodies warm when the water cools. They get lethargic and start to have trouble swimming. Many drown. But when the wind starts to blow, as it often does, it blows the exhausted animals ashore, where volunteers from the Massachusetts Audubon Society Wellfleet Bay Wildlife Sanctuary are patrolling the beach. Every year in the fall and early winter, hundreds of sea turtles wash up along the beaches of Cape Cod. Most of them are the critically endangered Kemp's Ridley. So, every year there's a massive effort to rescue and save as many as possible. Volunteers look for stranded turtles. When they find one, they place it gently in a banana box for transport. Why a banana box? They're strong, free, 
and already have ventilation holes. There's your guy. First, the sea turtles are transported back to the Mass Audubon Society Well Fleet office. Biologist Rebecca Schoer and some volunteers are doing triage. So the different types of measurements that Kellen is doing, the first one is a straight measurement with the calipers, where that gives you an idea of the straight length of a turtle's shell, its width, things like that. And then we do a curved measurement with that soft tape, and it gives, gives us an idea of the shape of the turtle's shell. And then we're doing the weight, which is 2.4. Yep. And that's in kilograms. And the last thing we do before we take photos is that we make any notes of any medical issues with this turtle. And you can see on this one, it's got, I mean, it's bleeding from its eye here. Don't know if that was a bird that pecked it or something like that. So we'll make a note of that for the aquarium. But this guy's alive and not looking great, but this is actually not a turtle in terrible shape. Heart Soon the turtles are packed up for a 90-minute ride in their banana boxes up to the New England Aquarium's Animal Care Center in Quincy, just south of Boston. In this nondescript warehouse with a staff of five and a dozen volunteers, hundreds of sea turtles are being rehabilitated. Hey, how hey, are hey, you? Hey, hi, Katie. Hi. How are you? I'm doing well. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me down. Thanks for coming over. I arrive and meet Katie Pugliaris, a senior biologist at the New England Aquarium. She takes me on a tour of the facility, and I get to meet a bunch of sea turtles. The rescued turtles are divided into different tanks based on size, species, and even temperature. The turtles can't be warmed right up from being hypothermic. That could actually make them even more sick. They have to be warmed up very slowly. As they warm up, they get more active and lively. I wonder if they know how lucky they are to be alive. Once they're back up to temperature, they're hungry and sometimes feisty. We systematically go through, we monitor their weight, make sure they have healthy weight gain. If any turtles start losing weight, it's a sign that we need to look a little bit more closely. We look for any ulcerations in their eyes or obstructions in their nose. We look in their mouths as well. And then we check their flippers. Sometimes infections will progress into their joints and that's not really a good thing. For turtles that have prolonged swelling of their joints and even after antibiotic treatment, they're not going away, we do laser therapy. It and takes care of those unsightly wrinkles too. <laughs> Katie takes me into one of the clinics where a new patient is being checked out, a small Kemp's Ridley. We're doing a tracheal wash so we can get some of the debris from the upper respiratory and we'll send it out for culture and then identify the bacteria. And then because he does have different sedation drugs, we'll monitor him for a little while, make sure his heart rate gets back up to where it should be before we introduce him back into the pool. And then we'll watch him when he gets back into the pool, make sure he responds really well. As the stranding season goes on, the rehab pools get full. The sea turtles have to be numbered to keep track of them all. There are hundreds of them. Soon there are so many that crowding can be a problem. So the healthiest ones are ready to go back to the wild. Unfortunately, it's still winter in Boston, so a small group of lucky turtles get their own private flight with a volunteer pilot down to Orlando, Florida. Here, SeaWorld will take over. The turtles get a checkup, then a few days to rest and recover from their flight. Finally, it's off to a beautiful Florida beach. The turtles are released into nice warm water and given a second chance at life. Saving cold, stunned sea turtles takes incredible time, money, and effort. It would be staggering to add up the cost involved to save each one of these marine reptiles. But when I see this effort, I have renewed faith in humanity. People do care about wildlife, 
And in the case of highly endangered animals like the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle, every rescue counts.